brothers and sisters, friends and family, we welcome you on this beautiful day as we come to celebrate the union of marriage between Jeff and Tiny. And let us begin our celebration as we begin all our celebrations in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we come to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we come with a grateful heart. We thank our loving God for blessing us with love, with friendship, with companionship, with those who surround us with their love and their goodness. Oftentimes we become a little distracted with all that goes around us in the world. And so we also come thanking the Lord, but also we come to ask for pardon and for peace for the times that we have failed to recognize not only the love of others in our life, but God's love in our life. And so we pause. And let us pray. O God, who in creating the human race willed that man and wife should be one, join, we pray, in a bond of inseparable love these your servants, Jeff and Tiny, who are to be united in the covenant of marriage, so that as you make their love fruitful, they may become, by your grace, witnesses to charity itself. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> and I'd like to invite Tina, which is Tiny's sister, she's going to come up and read our first reading. Người đàn bà đầu tiên Thượng đế bảo Con người sống một mình không tốt Ta sẽ làm một người giúp đỡ thích hợp cho nó Thượng đế lấy đất tạo nên mọi loài muôn thú trên đất Mọi loài chim trời Xong ngài đưa chúng đến trước con người Để xem con người đặt tên cho chúng ra sao Con người đặt tên cho sinh vật nào Thì thành tên ấy cho nó Con người đặt tên cho tất cả các loài gia súc các loài chim trên trời và các muôn thú sống trên đất nhưng về con người thì không tìm được ai giúp đỡ thích hợp cả cho nên thượng đế khiến con người ngủ mê trong khi đang ngủ ngài lấy ra một xương hông của con người rồi lấp lại chỗ ấy thượng đế dùng cái xương hông của người nam mà làm thành một người nữ xong đưa người nữ ấy đến gặp người nam người nam nói đây là con người mà xương là do xương tôi ra thân thể cũng do thân thể tôi mà ra tôi sẽ gọi nàng là đàn bà vì nàng ra từ người đàn ông cho nên người đàn ông phải rời cha mẹ mà gắn bó với vợ mình hai người sẽ trở thành một thân the word of the lord thanks be to god I am 
and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand, for it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Church, literally, literally. 
and you have flown me from California to come here and to be with you on this occasion. I love this, the reading from Corinthians because it tells us what love is and what love isn't. Now, I am not going to call on you if you don't want to be called on, but if you want to be called on, uh, please raise your hand and we will have a really interactive uh, discussion here. What does scripture say that love isn't? Love is not, I'll give you an example, boastful. Right? Now I come from a family of 13 children. My mother and father now, the ladies, boast a lot about their children and their grandchildren. But in a marriage, I, I, would, I would imagine that it is important for us to be humble, to be in love with each other in such a way that your love always shines through. That's, to me, the thing that needs to stick out in all of our minds today. Love is not, what else? Love is not most of love is not, Pedro, that's so nicely. Love is not this. Yes. Envious. I actually witnessed the marriage of a couple that were so competitive in everything. It nearly killed a marriage. And when they came to me for marriage counseling, first of all, I said, well, I'm not a marriage counselor, I'm a priest. Let me advise you to the or go to Retro Live. I don't know if you have heard of Retro Live, if you haven't. Retro Live is a program for really troubled marriages. So since none of you look like you know, you know Retro Live is a good thing. Love is not envious. We should have no reason to envy. Love, again, is all giving, is selfless. It gives, it, it gives everything for the next person. And so some of the things, some of the suggestions that I'm going to give here may be a little, you may say a little radical. Okay? Uh, you may or agree with me, you may not agree with me, and that's okay. But the idea is, is that for us, for those of you who are married, I say for us because I live in a community. We are religious priests who live with our brother priests. And, and so I want to say today, when we think about the love, we should think about it in terms of its gifts. First of all, marriage cannot sustain itself. Only on love. Would you agree? Follows out in English. Because nobody's nodding here, so now I feel like I'm talking to myself. So if you feel like nodding or something, let me know how you're feeling, because I need to know that you understand what I'm saying. So love is meant as the first element that attracts a couple to each other. But in order for it to be sustained, in order for a marriage to last, in order for my vows to last, there needs to be communication. And so that is one of the very first things I'd like to suggest to you. Although we come today to listen to these wonderful scripture readings, we come here to witness the marriage of these two beautiful people. I also want to give a little bit of advice. And for you married, married couples, you could suggest something else if you like too, I don't mind. Communication is paramount. I just let the other priest know, you know what? This is what I'm going to be. I encourage, you know, just disagree with me. Talk to each other. It's amazing what happens when we speak to each other. In Spanish we say, hablando se entienden las cosas. When you speak, everything is understood. Treat each other like good friends. How many of you fell in love with your friend? Alright, that's awesome. Okay. I encourage those people who are not married. Make sure that when you get married, you have fallen in love with your friend. Under the marriage canopy of the seven blessings given to the bride and groom, one of the most one of the most important is that they should become beloved friends. Now, I know these two are friends because the moment Jeff met Tiny and things started to get serious, he would be, he would be texting or emailing me at two in the morning. Now I know it's two in the morning because in California it's three hours difference. It's eleven o'clock my time. I'm still awake and I'm thinking, why is this guy texting me? Doesn't he ever sleep? But it was because he was just so excited to share the love that he had for his best friend. 
I'd like to encourage us all to continue this idea of communication, of friendship with one another. One of the other elements is establish strong boundaries. What does that mean? Now I know mothers, this is going to sound really sad. I'm not trying to be mean. This is just me as a priest speaking. I have six, let me say I have 12 in-laws. Remember, I have 12 brothers and sisters. But when you marry your spouse today, you are marrying your spouse. Not your spouse's family. Sometimes that's hard to kind of swallow, right? Sometimes it's hard for us to hear that. It doesn't mean that everybody else is now going to the side. No, 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 no. Now, the difficulty is you have to learn how to manage that love. The love of your wife, the love of your husband, which is now priority. Then, the love of your mother, the love of your sisters and brothers. And I say that because I think it's very important for us to recognize that as a married, as a married couple, you come home to your spouse, right? For myself in religious life, I come home to my religious community. And so this is the next, the next element I want to speak about, which you guys might probably think about something else, but that's okay, we're human beings. Give each other pleasure daily. Daily. Going back to uh, when people come to me for marriage counseling, and things are struggling in the marriage. The first thing I ask is how often are you communicating? Well, we kind of talk, we kind of don't talk. And one of the next very important questions I ask is, how often are you having sex? I don't want to know that. But you need to know that. It needs to be often. Very often. Husbands are probably going, yes, I like this priest. Wives are probably going, slap this guy. Okay? Marriage is up ultimately about making each other feel good about everything in life. Not just physical pleasure. It's about helping each other every day to be in love with life, to be in love with each other. If you know your wife loves lilies, do not bring her roses because you love roses. Do you see? Do you get me? So learn what each other loves. And that is what is important in marriage, in any relationship. That is what 100% what means. A lot of times in our society, we're not very blessed to be in this society where everything is compromised, everything is 50%. You do your 50%, I do my 50%. But well, what happens if you're not capable of doing your 50%? So what happens? What happens? Everything just falls apart. But here, we are encouraged to live 100%, to give 100%. You will learn, hopefully, in your marriage, that you will enjoy giving more than receiving. And so, the challenge for all of us today, not only for Tyson and for Jeff, but for all of us, whether you are married, whether you are single, whether you are in a religious body, we need to, every day, use the gifts that God has given us to build His kingdom. For married couples, you are building this kingdom by proliferating the world with many human beings and by bringing the love of husband and wife to the table. For religious people, we are called to give of ourselves in the service of our brother and sister, therefore serving others and building up the kingdom. And for those of us who are single, well, it is also our call to live chastely and to learn how we can do that. So let us take the example of everyone in this room. Let us not just think of myself, this priest, this priest die, or that priest, or these married people, or these single people. Let us all together as a community learn how we can utilize our gifts to build each other up. And that is ultimately what happens in marriage. You need to learn how are you called to build that is the most important thing. And so brothers and sisters, as we witness now the exchange of vows of Tiny and Jeff, let us also think about not only their own call to love, but let us think about how God is calling everyone of us here to love in a more deep and a more profound way. May God continue to bless each and every one of you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so now I invite Jeff and Tiny to
my dear friends, you have come together in this church so that the Lord may still and strengthen your love in the presence of the church's minister and this community. Christ abundantly blesses this love. He has already consecrated you in baptism, and now he enriches and strengthens you by a special sacrament so that you may assume the duties of marriage in mutual and lasting fidelity. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Jeff and Timmy, have you come here freely and without reservation to give yourselves to each other in marriage? Will you love and honor each other as man and wife for the rest of your life? Will you accept children loving you from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and His church? Since it is your intention to enter into marriage, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and His church. Jeff, if you take Timmy to be your wife, do you promise to be true to her in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love her and honor her all the days of your life? I do. Timmy, do you take Jeff to be your husband? Do you promise to be true to him in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love him and honor him? all the days of your life. You have declared your consent before the church. May the Lord in His goodness strengthen your consent and fill you both with His blessings. What God has shown, man must not provide. Amen. amen. And can the church say amen? Amen. 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 Lord, bless and consecrate Tini and Jeff in their love for each other. May these rings be a symbol of true faith in each other, and always remind them of their love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Take this ring as a sign of my love. As a sign of my love. And to them. And to them. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
for the protection and sanctity of human life from conception until natural death. May all people be treated with dignity they deserve as God's children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord. For all those who prepare for marriage, may they grow in wisdom and grace and reflect God's love to all around them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Tini and Jeff, who began their married life together this day, may they experience the love of God, the support of family and friends, and the blessings of children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially the relatives and friends of Tini and Jeff, and of all present for this wedding, may they enjoy perfect happiness and total fulfillment in eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayer. We ask that you grant the investment in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And please be seated. <laughs>
an unbreakable bond of peace, so that the chaste and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. By your providence and grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonder of this twofold design, that while the birth of children brings beauty to the world, their rebirth and baptism gives increase to the Church, through Christ our Lord, through Him, with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end. and Jen. 
May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your building church on earth. With your servant, Francis Arthur, the bishop of this diocese, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people, your son has gained for you. Be mindful also, Lord, of Tini and Jeff, whom you have brought to their wedding day, so that by your grace they may abide in mutual love and in peace. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you in their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy for the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom you bestow in the world all this glory. Through him with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
they may come to the life and bless in the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And now let us offer another sign of peace. So Jeff, continue to walk each other's sign of peace. So you can go down and offer your friends a sign of peace.
by the power of this sacrifice to the Lord, accompany with your loving favor what in your providence you have instituted, so as to make them one heart and love, that those you have already joined this holy union, death and tea, and replenish with the one bread and the one chalice, are here to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now as the divided the room will now go and take flowers to our blessed brother.
find your answers there Answers that no words could speak But if you could hear my heart May God the Eternal Father keep you of one heart and love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your heart. Amen. May you be blessed and your children have solace in your friends and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The celebration of this Eucharist love is ended. You may now kiss your God. Thank you.